invitations and best wishes. Are you ready for another great day on Come Home with Jen Mallon? That's me, by the way, I'm Jen Mallon. And I have the privilege of visiting with you for the next half an hour. Thank you for dropping by. May I offer you a cup of coffee or tea? Do you have yours? Nice going. Good job, faithful viewers. You know how this works. Well, I have an incredible research department and they have been unearthing some very interesting facts about coffee, which we've already established as the world's favorite beverage. After water, and we don't wanna underestimate the importance of water, do we? Because we need water to brew coffee, yay! Uh, you'd be surprised at just how many blogs there are out there about coffee. Let me just share this tidbit from a coffee blogger. He says there's only three elements to a perfect cup of coffee. One, it's gotta be brewed and served at the perfect temperature, which is 200 degrees, according to the Specialty Coffee Association. They ought to know, right? Two, it's gotta taste perfect. Again, according to coffee experts, how do you get to be one of those anyway? Hmm. Okay, it should be either Colombian, Ethiopian, or Indonesian coffee. Mexican coffee makes a list too, but I'm surprised at this. Cuban coffee is really far down on the list, which as a Tampanian, I completely disagree. But listen, just drink it whatever you like, whatever flavor, whatever continent. Three, nobody can disagree with this one. You have to have enough coffee that everyone gets their fill. Hallelujah, I say amen to that. So there's your coffee trivia for today. But now I wanna talk about my guests. Have you ever heard the saying, not all who wander are lost. Well, clearly these two have been uh, with me when I'm trying to make sense of my OnStar and my GPS. But if ever I felt the need to just wander, I want to go with Steve and Carol uh, Cunningham. They are our guests today on Come Home. And next to Rick Steves, they may just have the coolest jobs in the world. Steve and Carol Cunningham host a CTN show called Destin to Rome. And if you haven't seen it, you're missing one of the most fun shows on CTN. They really explore the beauty of God's creation. They show the wonders of his world. They bring all these sights and sounds to CTN just for you. And they say, come on, let's get out there. Come on the road with us. So Destin to Rome is a great gift to everyone who watches. And the cool part is you can experience all these joys and wonders with Carol and Steve right here on your favorite CTN channel and online too, and a man. And so all their escapades are on YouTube. So whether you're sitting back, having tea or coffee as pictured here, or you're out doing your own walkabout, you can wander with them to your heart's content. I can't wait to visit with them. I hope you're prepared for the most fun show you will see today. Your seat is waiting in the living room, so load up uh, on whatever you need, and we're gonna come right back with Steve and Carol. Now, before we do, let's go to a life hack from our precious friend, Elizabeth Shreve. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Shreve, and this is my book, I Cried a River. And I just wanna read you just the beginning lines of what I wrote. I am a cancer survivor. I am a strong woman. I am a wife, I am a mother, and I am a friend. I am cancer free. That was my declaration, the first paragraph of my book, because I wanted you to know that it is possible to fight this battle and come out victorious. It is possible to receive your healing. And that's one of the reasons I wrote this book. And it's one of the reasons I went through Deeper Revelation books to have it published because I wanted it to be cared for and I wanted it to come alive and I wanted it to be loved on just the way I want to love on you through this book. And I, I got a little story I want to tell you. Uh, when I went for my PET scan, I went on Black Friday. And believe me, in my spirit, it was a Black Friday. And it was just me and an older man and a, a little young boy. And I, he put me in the PET scan and he told me, do not move. I, I got things I want to do today. And so if you'll be perfectly still, we'll get out of here real quickly. And when it, it started making the noise, I don't know if you've ever had one, but it clicks. And I heard music and I thought, how sweet. He put music on for me. And it was a song that I was familiar with. And it said, I'll cherish the old rugged cross till all my trophies that I laid down. 
and I moved, of course. I mean, it was a song that was encouraging. And he stopped the pet scan and he pulled me out and he said, I asked you not to move. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, it was the music. And he said, okay, we're going to do it again. And so he put me back in. And once again, with the clicking of that pet scan, I heard, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. And I was moving. I couldn't be still. I was so excited. And he pulled me back out. And he said, I really asked you, ma'am, it's Black Friday and I won't go shopping and I got friends. And I, and I said, it's the music you're playing, Kevin. And he said, ma'am, there's no music. And I was like, there is music. And he said, there's no music. And I knew then, right then, the Lord was speaking to me. He was telling me that if I would cherish the cross as I went through this struggle, and he was telling me that if all my trophies that I would lay down, and that if I would just come to him and worship him through this storm, he would bring me through victoriously. And I just felt such a spirit come into that place. And immediately I looked at that young boy and I said, hey, do you know the Lord? And he said, I did. And I said, I think I'm here for you. And do you know that at that moment, Kevin and I said a prayer. And while I was being baptized in healing, Kevin was being baptized in salvation. And the Spirit of the Lord was in that cold clinical room. And I didn't really care about the PET scan. And I didn't really care about my diagnosis of cancer. What I cared about was that I felt the presence of the Lord so strong. And that Kevin was there praying through to salvation. Oh, look, God will visit you. He'll visit you wherever you're at. And He'll give you a revelation. I want you to go to shreveministries.org, pick up this book, give it to someone, anyone that's going through, not just cancer, but any kind of illness, send it to them. Call us at Shreve Ministries. Let us pray for you for healing. I cried a river, shreveministries.org. Well, I am excited for you today and for me because I love when people just take everyday normal things about life and then they invite others into that narrative and expose them to things that they may have never been able to experience before. You know, that is the heart of God. And today I have special guests, Steve and Carol, and, and you guys just took something that you <laughs> liked and enjoyed and you've made yeah. a program. <laughs> and you get to take people with you and they get to hear it through your eyes you know, through your experiences, the tastes and the smells and the colors and, and Absolutely. how fun. It is. So how in the world <laughs> did God give you this idea for Destin to Roam? I'm <laughs> program director here at CTN and we were praying, looking for new programs and God spoke to, was it you or myself? Yeah, and, it was me. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, unusual. It was, it was just, it was just humility. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. You know, God speaks weird stuff. I was like praying in the spirit a lot. And she was like, you need to find some new, exciting programs, something different. And I, I always pray for him because I don't work. And I was praying and it was like the Lord said, you know, well, you love to travel. And I'm like, I know, Lord, I love to travel. And he's like, why don't you do a travel program? <gasps> that is so great. I was like, as soon as I heard from the Lord, I was like texting Stephen. What about it? What if we do? What if we did our own program? And I'm getting excited. I can hardly text it. You know, I'm like, can, can we do this? And he's like, yeah, let's just try it. And I say, okay. So I went online right away to find some place to go. What's close? <laughs> yes. But he kind of calmed me down a little bit. And he said, well, let's talk to some people at, at CTN first. And so we did. We talked to a few people and we got their input and it all sounded really good. So we booked our first program to Savannah, Georgia, and wow. yep, just headed there and took our little phones and a few other little items and came Made back. Made a bunch of mistakes. And, and oh my gosh. Our yeah. editors cleaned it all up. Oh, and... isn't our editors lovely? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> They're lovely. Yes, really. So, so Savannah was your first destination. Very first. Uh -huh. And how many have you gone to since? Oh my gosh, do you even know? There are 30 some. Wow. Yeah. So so over, we've been yeah. we've been in every state in the United States when, by the when we first got married between then and now. Wow. And uh, in the lower 48. Yeah. 
And there's in every single state, there's something gorgeous. I yeah. mean, I, I lean towards California being born and raised there, but there was one time we were going through Kansas and it was the wheat was dry and their wind was, and it was looked like waves of ocean. Yeah. It was just gorgeous. There's so wow. many pretty things in the United States to see. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. live, really, so many people don't ever just get out of a five or 10 mile radius. Yeah. So it's crazy. How wonderful that you can take them there. Yeah. And, but let's let's go and see a clip. So if you've never seen Destined to Realm with Steve and Carol, you you've got to watch. Hey, hey! Our trail. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, is there gas in the RV? Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's go. Sounds that, good. I know. I pray God gives y'all like a little mini bus and you can like there take people with you. you hear that one? Yeah. Raise money for the station. There you you know, go. Charge them to be their tour guide. There you go. <laughs> so often we go out of the United States to travel and there's so much beauty and, oh and my gosh. richness right there here. There really is. Every state. There, every state and has a hidden things that people don't even realize are there. You know, yeah. there's just there to be explored. Yeah. Does God lead you sometimes, like when you're in various states, to pray over specific things? Like, does he give you prayer initiatives for those uh, places yeah. you go? We, we get a lot of response. She's had an Instagram account for quite a while, and there was about 4,000 people, uh, followers. And so we changed it over to Destined to Rome. And it's amazing what you can minister how you can minister on social media without realizing it. Right, yeah. People would DM her and say, my brother's got cancer, can you? And she's Aww. never brought that out. I'm going to pray for you. you yes, know? yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's awesome how God lines all of He does. And we've gotten to meet people like uh, on Instagram. They'll find out where we're going. And they'll say, Carol, can we meet up with oh. you? You know, so that is so, it's so fun to just meet these people that you've talked to on Instagram or wherever and just meet them in person. And we met this one couple and we, we, we went to their house and we were there for a few hours. And then we were going to, what was in that, that promo was at Decatur, Georgia. We were going to the Hot Air Balloon Festival. And I said, they live not too far. And I said, do you meet us there? So they met us there and we spent the day with them. That was the second day. And then a few months later, we, we kept in contact kind of. A few months later, she writes me and she said, Carol, my husband just had a heart attack. Oh. Can you pray for me? Wow. So, I mean, just connections like that, you know, he and just away. I feel so honored that she would think of yeah. us, you know, at that, that, at that point. Ministry opportunity. Exactly. Everywhere. You know? Open so, doors. Yeah. yeah. So she, I was sending her scriptures and praying for it. Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but mm -hmm. we went ahead and did the show. And I first, before we did it, I texted her and said, is it okay? And she's like, Oh, Carol, I'd be so honored to, yeah. for you to go ahead and do it. So, so yeah, God really does open doors for us to be able to minister to people. And 
Also on our show, we try to put in what we call a God moment in the yeah. show where we will do like a testimony or share scripture or pray for certain things, you know. So we try to work it into whatever the show is. Like one time we went to um, Wisconsin and we saw, I don't know if you've ever seen the... Um, Van Gogh. Van Gogh experience. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to that? No. Amazing. Amazing. We, we put it in our show. And Van Gogh, um, he killed himself when he was like 36. Yeah. And he, he had only sold one painting. And so at the end of the program, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pray for people that have problems with suicide right. or those thoughts or stuff. So there's always something in the show that can lead us to a point where we can pray for somebody yeah. in that situation or that purpose. So God has been so good with us for that. Well, we directed a drama department at a church for about 15 years. And the program is similar to that. We used to go out and you'd have fun skits and comedy and stuff. But then at the end, you can hit them with something serious. You know? yeah. So you've got their attention. Right. And their hearts soften. Yeah. yeah. That, you know how comedy and it just yes. makes you feel good. And it you're does. like open, you know, your heart's open. And that's the time when you can just. Yeah, and this is bait, you know, yeah. you're, you're, yeah. you're using the bait, you're going fishing, and uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah. to me, I'm always amazed at the pulpits, you know, that God's giving people right now, is yeah. your pulpit could be your beauty chair, your pulpit yeah. could be, if you're an editor, your pulpit could be your RV, you know, God just says, hey, whatever you give to me, I'll redeem it, yeah. and I'll use it for ministry purposes. Yeah, well, isn't that what the does. prophets are saying now? Yeah. That it's, that it's not just the pastors or preachers no. anymore. It's the everyday people that yeah. are going to rise up. The church yep. itself is going to rise up and be begin to share and really, you know, be there for people. You know, the, the pastors and preachers Can't aren't do necessarily all. reaching. Yeah. No. So. Well, I, I just love that y'all have said yes and you have fun and you're making it an adventure and you're being evangelists and that's and making <laughs> friends. Funny. I Kingdom. was calling us evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. You are. Sure yeah. does sound news. weird, though. Even Carol, the evangelist. <laughs> well, the word says we're all evangelists. That's we're right. all called to be evangelists. Well, um, I want to also just, uh, I want to talk about your testimony because I your story is so touching to me. Um, I think it's special because Jesus Revolutions just come out uh -huh. and you were right there in California. And also um, it's, it's special because I was, I was born again in my home. Awesome. My husband was born again less than 24 hours later. And oh, that's wow. so similar to yes. yours. And yeah. so Steve um, and Carol, you brought that video about your testimony, and so I'd like to show it so that so people can hear it. Okay. okay. Hey, I love cars. Being raised in Southern California, I used to always joke that when I was born, I had a gas pedal under my foot. I love working on them, restoring them. Matter of fact, a few days ago, I thought that's exactly what God did to my life. He restored it. I mean, he did a step farther even. He made me brand new. He didn't take just a swipe with McGuire's wax. He created a new creature and I, I love him for it. My wife and I were living in California and. We got involved in drugs for about 11 years, marijuana, cocaine, uppers, downers, and basically anything that would mess up your life. Halfway through those 11 years, we moved back to Colorado where I learned how to silversmith. And I took the jewelry out on the road. My wife stayed home. And I was in a motel room one night and I had the TV on. Billy Graham came on and I'm not exactly sure what he said, but whatever it was really touched my heart. And I found myself on that dirty, motel carpet on my knees saying God I don't know if you exist I don't know if you can change my life but if you can here it is I'm giving it to you so when I came home I told my wife I had something to tell her and she said well she's got something to tell me and she received Christ the same week that I did two different locations we've been going ever since this was 1976 recently though within the past five years I've learned so much more about God's grace God's amazing grace Matter of fact, it's radical grace. I realized that my father loved me, that my father wasn't mad at me. 
My sole purpose here at CTN is to make sure as many people as possible learns this message, that they have a loving Father. I appreciate you taking the time to listen. By the way, my name is Steve. Steve, Carol, what a beautiful story. It was pretty neat. Yeah. She was at home up on the roof, oh, sun yeah. tanning and reading <laughs> Oral Roberts' book. And at the end, there was a... Can you believe Oral Roberts? I think it was like seed faith or something yeah. like that. Nothing to do really with salvation. But I read it, and at the end, it said, you know, say this prayer. And I thought, say this prayer. And I just started weeping wow. when I started saying the prayer, oh. you know, and I knew something special had happened. Yeah. And I didn't know how I was going to tell Steve, you know, but it was like. And you, um, had, already, home, you had already given your heart through watching Billy Graham. The yeah. same. The it same, was probably two days yeah. ahead. Because usually we both went out on the road. Yeah. This time I just went out for three or four days, I think yeah. it was. How it was just supernatural. That time, I guess. Yeah. yeah. How supernatural. It, you know, it, that, you know, you can't make that up. It, that is God saying, I've called you two to be together. I have a ministry for both of you, and I'm going to bring you, you know, to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the yeah. same week. Yeah. Now, that doesn't happen for every couple. <laughs> no, I'm... And I'm sorry if that's not your story, but listen, you've got an incredible story, too. That's yeah. right. You Everybody stand does. and continue to Everybody contend does. for your spouse. But how how precious. Yeah. And then that was the game changer, right? That was Radical it. But we didn't conversion. get we didn't get discipled until probably three or four years later. <laughs> yeah. so that, that's where the importance of church comes yes. in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can wander around and like we, we ended up down here, her sister and brother in law they were all in drugs with us before too. And they had gotten saved before we did. And uh, so when we got down here I couldn't understand. God made marijuana, why can't I smoke it? And he said <laughs> and he he taught us in grace without realizing it. Yeah. You know, it was before the big grace movement. Yeah. And, and he says, well, God made roaches and I don't eat them. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Good example. <laughs> yeah, good example. Very. So they really did disciple us because yeah. before that, we were like reading the Bible, but weren't un understanding it. Didn't and, get it. And we were yeah. like smoking marijuana as we're reading the Bible. So it was really Asking not Asking for the interpretation, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what? That does show the grace of God. Exactly. Oh, because gosh. if you haven't been taught or mentored or discipled, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. The whole time he's going, come on. It's so funny because I used to say, I don't even know what questions to ask. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't know anything. So, yeah. you know, you really do need to have somebody disciple. They did. They discipled us, got us in church. In love. And, yeah. It was cool. That's was wonderful. Really cool. Yeah. Those are the operative words, in love. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't disciple in fear or in bondage no. or in religion because no. it's love that draws. Yeah. It's love that convicts. It's love that allows us to lay down lifestyles that aren't the highest and best, <laughs> yeah. you know, for us. But um, I'm sure that that was a fun journey because you came out of one lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. you came into his marvelous light and so much changed. Yes. So much change. Your, yeah. your want to's change. You know? Exactly. Because we weren't exactly. discipled in stop that and don't do that. Yeah. It's like they knew you get closer to God and stuff falls away. You just yeah. don't even want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Love covers, love draws, yeah. love's amazing. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'm so grateful. Y'all have been married for how long? It'll be 54 years, July 4th. That's our wedding anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. a miracle. It's been a good life. Yeah, I, uh, I sound like I'm ending. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was I a good life. Soon. That's right. No way. A long you way have to more go. cities to see. We need <laughs> yeah. more episodes. My like 125 exactly. <laughs> more. Okay. Every time the devil tries to say something like that, I'm going, "No way, devil! Yeah. I have a mission in life." Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. And. Yeah, in the, the canoe spot, I was like, oh, Lord, is an alligator going to come? Is a manatee going to uh, come? Yeah. Alligators do come in that episode. Yeah, they yeah. do? Yes. Okay, I'm going back to watch it. <laughs> there's okay. about a six-foot one now. Yeah, there. there's a small one you can see in the distance, but then there's another one that we got up close. To. Okay. So, yeah. You can tell it because she's going, no, don't get too close. <laughs> no. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if any of you want to see the alligator episode or any of the Destined to Rome, go on ctnonline.com. You can watch their program live there. You can also go on On Demand and watch all their back programs. You can watch the alligator issue, yes. the hot air balloon <laughs> issue. Uh, there's so many wonderful things on there that you'll enjoy. You can also click on that and it takes you to 
a page where you can be in touch with them. Maybe you can request them to come to your hometown yeah. uh, and, and highlight something special there. So, or reach out to them on Instagram. So all that can be done through the CTN online website and app. But before we end today, I want y'all to be able to minister. I know you minister, you know, from the open road, but I want you to <laughs> minister to those that are watching Come Home today and that are like, oh, I like them. And so I just, I turn it over to you. I don't know. I think maybe we, we, we could minister on um, relationships, maybe. Absolutely. You know, since you mentioned about us being married for so long. So that maybe people, they are looking for that special mate or they have a mate and it's not going so well. And God will fix that. Yeah. Or they just lost their mate or, you know. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Wanna... Father God, we lift the viewers to you now in the name of Jesus, yes, Father God. Father. If they are looking for a mate or they've lost their mate, Father God, yes. you are a friend at all times. I thank you, Lord, that. We pray that you would come into their life now in the name of Jesus. And you know the situation that they are feeling right now. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you're going to turn things around if they're not going in the direction that they should be. Yes. Thank we just you, we bless you, Lord. And Father God, we know that these are your children. Yeah. That's what you call us, your children. And that, Father God, you have their best interests in mind, Father. And we thank you, Daddy, that your word says that we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. Yeah. And I thank you, Father, that the people are hearing your voice right now, that you're giving them wisdom and discernment, Father God, and showing them, Daddy, how to make their relationship a love relationship, Father God. Just showing them what to do, just little things, how to better love that one person in their life that, that um it's just not, the relationship is not what they, they would love it to be, Father God. You and you'll just around. give them wisdom and turn around the situation. Yes. And those, Father God, that are looking for that mate, Daddy, you will lead them and guide them, Father God, in the direction and the places they're to go, that they will be divine appointments, Father God, yes. in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you, Daddy, that you have planned for every one of our lives, Father God. And if that desire is in their heart, Daddy, that you would meet the desires of our heart. That's what you said you'd do, because that's a good, good Father that you are. And we just thank you, Father God, for your goodness and for your um, blessing upon these people that are watching and believing right now. We ask it all in your precious Son's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Carol. It was fun. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> Salt of the earth. And look. You need to come home. If you've been destined to roam away from the kingdom, come home. Amen. Come back to the cross. <laughs> come back to Jesus. Amen. I'm Jen Mallon. I'll see you next time.